Thanks to Squarespace for helping support this episode. Go to squarespace.com slash science asylum and add code science asylum at checkout to save 10% off your first purchase. Hey crazies, there's a whole list of ways the world could end. Human caused global warming being the most immediate. But let's say we get over our differences and we stop unsustainably consuming resources. We'll still need to contend with the sun, eventually. In about four or five billion years, the sun will expand into a red giant, which, you know, seems pretty dangerous. So will the earth survive? Maybe, maybe not. This episode was made possible by generous supporters on Patreon. Does the sun even have the power to destroy the earth? <sighs> oh, oh yeah. It's a giant ball of plasma. You might even say it's a miasma of incandescent plasma. The sun isn't just big though, it's also massive. It has over 333,000 times the mass of the earth. The sun represents 99.8% of the mass of the entire solar system. If you imagine the total mass of the solar system as $1,000, the sun is 998 of those dollars. About one of those two remaining dollars goes to Jupiter, leaving only one dollar for everything else. Given that, it seems pretty clear. The sun does have the ability to destroy us. But will it? To answer that, we need to understand how the sun actually works. Let's start at the beginning. No, 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 stop that. Why do I keep walking into that joke? Anyway, our entire solar system started as a giant cloud of gas and dust. As it collapsed under gravity, lumps started to form in the cloud. Some of the lumps became planets, but most of the mass of that cloud went into a central lump that would become the sun. Remember, 998 out of $1,000. But it, it's not quite a star yet. As the matter in that central lump compresses on itself, it heats up. That high temperature does allow the gas to emit light. But the outward pressure that light exerts is nowhere near enough to hold back gravity. This big lump of gas and dust continues to collapse and continues to heat up. Eventually, it reaches a critical temperature and BAM! Nuclear fusion ignites in the core. The, the sun, sun is born. born. Pure thermodynamics might not be enough to hold back gravity, but fusion certainly can. There's now enough outward pressure to stop the sun from collapsing. The sun is stable. It's in what we call hydrostatic equilibrium because it's a balanced fluid. It's not exactly static, but just go with it, okay? There are two ways hydrogen can fuse the proton-proton chain, and the CNO cycle. Which way does the sun do it? Both ways, actually. Both types of hydrogen fusion happen simultaneously, but not equally. How much of each type a star has depends on core temperature. Right now, the sun is mostly fusing with the proton-proton chain at a temperature of 15 million Kelvin. But that won't be true forever. The, the temperature of the sun is gradually increasing. When the solar system was young, the sun was dimmer and cooler. As fusion uses up hydrogen, gravity pushes inward and the core heats up more and more. This changes the proportions of the two types of fusion. It also maintains equilibrium, but at a cost. That higher temperature makes fusion go faster. Fast, fast. Over time, the sun gets hotter and brighter. About a billion years from now, it'll be so hot our oceans will boil away. The Earth will become a desert planet. So does that mean there's no more humans? No more humans. On Earth? Let's be optimistic here. A billion years is a long time. Assuming we survive our own stupidity, I I'm sure that we'll have at least colonized the rest of the solar system by then. There should be some places farther out that are hospitable to humans. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, we'll, we'll probably have evolved into something else by then. Yeah, I, I, I take it back. No more humans. Okay, so is that the end of the video? Nope, the Earth still exists. It might be a lifeless desert, but it still exists. The sun still has one more chance to destroy the Earth. The, the red, red giant, giant phase. Regardless of the hydrogen fusion process, the goal is the same. 
turn four hydrogens into one helium a ton of times over and over again for as long as possible. Which unfortunately is not forever. Yes, the sun has a lot of hydrogen, but it's still a finite amount and only some of it is in the core. There's hydrogen in all the layers of the sun, but the core only has about 12% of it. That means only 12% is available for fusion. It's gonna run out of that eventually. And when it does, hydrostatic equilibrium cannot be maintained. Near the end of its life, the sun will have spent nine or 10 billion years fusing hydrogen into helium. The core will be full of helium, so it'll be on its last leg as a main sequence star. As it uses up the last of its core hydrogen, the outward pressure will drop and the core will collapse. Wouldn't the entire sun collapse? Actually, no. Remember, the sun is big. The outer layers wouldn't have a chance to notice the core is collapsing. They're just too far away. But the radiation zone that surrounds the core does notice, and the inner part of it collapses with the core. That radiation zone is still made of hydrogen, so when it collapses with the core, it almost immediately goes critical and starts to fuse. This forms a shell of fusing hydrogen around the inert helium core. The light emitted from that fusion pushes the outer layers away, while the helium core continues to collapse underneath it. The outer layers will swell at an accelerated pace. It'll take about a billion years or so, but it'll eventually reach Venus's orbit, give or take. So the Earth survives? Eh, not so fast. That inert helium core is still collapsing, and it won't stay inert forever. Remember, things heat up as they collapse. The core gradually goes from about 20 million Kelvin up to 100 million Kelvin. When the sun reaches Venus's orbit, that inert core reaches the critical 100 million Kelvin required for helium fusion. It won't be inert anymore. So the Earth is destroyed then. Well, not quite. From outside the sun, the moment helium fusion begins would look something like this. It's kind of disappointing. It does happen suddenly, which is why we call it a helium flash. But whatever civilization is still around probably wouldn't see anything. Nothing actually flashes outside the star. Deep inside the sun though, the core will get a new lease on life. The immense amount of light being emitted allows the core to expand again. This actually slows fusion down and lowers the pressure on the outer layers. The sun collapses again. So the Earth survives then, uh, not so fast. The core now has three layers, a hydrogen fusing shell, a helium fusing shell, and an inert inner core made of carbon and oxygen. Just like always, it attempts to find hydrostatic equilibrium, to find balance. As helium is turned into carbon and oxygen, the core gradually collapses and heats up again. The outer layers gradually swell again. This time, it only takes about 100 million years, but the edge of the sun will reach Earth's orbit. So the Earth is destroyed then? Well, maybe. Oh, reality is complicated and nuanced, okay? During all this expanding and contracting, the sun is gonna have a hard time holding onto its outer layers. Some of those outer layers are lost to space, ultimately forming a nebula that looks something like this. This will give Earth a fighting chance. By losing some of those outer layers, the sun will be lowering its own mass. That means its hold on the planets will weaken. The Earth's orbit will grow during that billion years or so. The problem is we don't actually know how much it'll grow, at least not to the precision we need. But here's what we do know. The sun is massive enough and hot enough to destroy us. In a billion years, it'll get even hotter, boiling away the oceans and turning the earth into a desert wasteland. A few billion years after that, it'll swell into a red giant the size of Earth's current orbit. It's possible that orbit can grow just enough for the earth to narrowly escape destruction, at which point it'll wait for the final breath of fusion when the sun becomes a white dwarf. The earth will freeze into a barren rock orbiting that white dwarf, watching it fade to black. If the Earth's orbit can't grow enough, it'll be inside the outer layers of the Sun, which aren't actually that hot. The Earth will continue to orbit inside the Sun for a while. The atmosphere will disappear quickly, but it'll take a really long time for the crust to melt, and even longer for the Earth to vaporize. 
but it will vaporize. By the time the sun becomes a white dwarf, the Earth will be long gone. So, what do you think? Will the Earth be destroyed or not? Please share in the comments. Thanks for liking and sharing this video. A special thanks goes out to Patreon patrons like Charles Compley, who help keep the show going. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to keep up with us. And until next time, remember, it's okay to be a little crazy. This episode was sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Making and maintaining a website can be overwhelming. You need good design skills, coding knowledge, security concerns. Squarespace handles all of that for you. They have tons of design templates that keep your website looking professional on all devices. It's super easy, no coding necessary. I especially like that you can put in a picture like a logo and it will automatically build a color palette for your site. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash science asylum and add code science asylum at checkout to save 10% off your first purchase. The biggest thing I learned after releasing the last video, y'all have very strong opinions about which quantum interpretation is the right one. I did not expect the comments to be so divisive. Holy cow. Anyway, thanks for watching.